How to make a 360 interactive video. What's the difference between 360 video and VR? You can create 360 degree videos, also known as immersive or spherical videos, using a specific type of camera. The omnidirectional camera, or multiple cameras, record a view in every direction at the same time. This will leave you with a 360 degree video. You can then scroll through it to see the shot from any direction using a compatible device or app to view it on. Traditionally, virtual reality has been understood as a computer-generated environment, a virtual world where you can interact and walk around. Until the advent of more sophisticated VR video authoring, you couldn't interact with 360-degree videos. You could only view them in a 360-degree omnidirectional view. Now, however, with Nearlife, you can create a VR experience with your 360-degree videos by adding interactions to the use of overlays. This might allow users to explore a space, find out additional information, or navigate a story or game. You can also use digitally generated videos and images. Making your content interactive also deepens the immersion of your 360-degree content. Not only are you engaging the user visually, but when they are also making choices or answering questions, you are engaging their brain too. What equipment is needed to make a 360 interactive video? The equipment you'll need to make your video will vary slightly depending on the type of 360 video you're making. One key piece of equipment is a camera that can film in 360 degrees. I used an Insta360 X2, which costs around £400 or $500. We used Insta360 to connect to our 360 degree camera, however we pretty much used the footage as is, only trimming the beginning and end of each clip where necessary. What are the benefits of 360 interactive video? 360 degree interactive videos are pretty much the most impactful, engaging and effective way to teach or test viewers about how to handle real life situations. The interactive aspect shows the direct consequences or benefits of their actions, depending on the choices they've made. Paired with the deep immersion of 360 or VR, this makes the experience feel not only more engaging, but more real too. When you really engage with a situation, and it feels more real, you're infinitely more likely to remember the information you've learned. Because of this, training for things like becoming a firefighter or learning CPR are the kind of things that interactive 360 degree content can really support. It removes all risk from the situation. However, they keep the experience as realistic as it can feel without putting the viewer through any real trauma. Another valuable use is showing off places like a venue, building, house, location, and so on. This means people can experience them without actually being there. This has enormous potential for real estate, holidays, and so on. By using your footage within Nearlife, you can create a fully self-contained interactive experience. How can you make 360 content? First, you'll want to have a storyboard, or plan. Once you've decided the locations, angles, order of clips, etc., you should get to grips with your camera and start recording the necessary media. You or the person filming might not want to be in sight in the footage. In which case, it's important you take into account the amount of time it will take to remove yourself from the shot. After you've recorded your footage, you'll need to trim it to your desired length. That way you can go into near life and place each one in the right place. One thing I learned, don't make your clips too short. After making my 360 degree video, I realised that the user should have more time in each area. This would give them enough time to explore the 360 degree scope before having to choose the next place to go. Because of this, I recommend you start with recordings that are around a minute long. This will make sure that your user will have enough time to look around. If this ends up being too long, you can always go back and trim the media to be shorter. How do you choose the right settings on Near Life? Once your media is sorted, you can go onto Near Life, create and name your project, and add a new scenario. Decide the countdown you wish to have, which defaults when the overlays will appear, as well as whether you wish to give feedback at the end relating to the user's choices. 
You can choose to have scoring and or inventory if there will be right or wrong answers in your video. You can also decide the colour you want the buttons and the colour they'll show when the user hovers over them. You can alter most of the settings you decide here later, while you're making the video. On the first node of your screen, you may wish to have a first title page. You should make sure this first title page is also set to a 360 format to make sure your video can work fully with a VR headset. How can you use Near Live to make the 360 interactive video? Upload your media and select the right clip for your first scene. For video format, 360 mono is for video recorded with just one lens, one image duplicated for two eyes, whereas stereo is for cameras with two lenses, two images, one for each eye, so this depends on how you filmed. For 360 degree and VR content, you'll want to use buttons provided by the Near Life platform. So, click the button group option. Buttons are placed in the middle horizontally by default in VR and will always appear where the viewer is looking to ensure they are not missed. So, add your other buttons and set them to jump to different nodes. Work through your map carefully, referring back to your plan to keep it in check. Be sure to preview it while you're making it too. Creating the rest of your map should be pretty straightforward. It was way less complicated than I expected. Near Life's latest features. 2D and video overlays. We now allow you to add 2D image and video overlays to your 180, 360 environments. For example, in an office building tool, you can give the end users a video to explain more about what each room is used for. VR editing and position controls. We now allow you to edit in VR mode, making interactive overlay placement more intuitive. We've also added more position controls to improve precision, making it easy to see exactly how and where your overlays will appear. You can rotate overlays, move them up and down, left or right, and tilt if necessary, to ensure they will look their best in the 180-360 environment. Triggers. We've also introduced triggers. This means you can use an overlay to trigger another one to appear. For example, you could use a hotspot overlay to trigger a video or image overlay.